Look, the whole, the whole idea here, Tim's Twitter listening parties, it seems so simple an idea now, but but take take us back a year. The first sort of lockdown listening party was was Some Friendly, uh, you, the Shelton's debut album, on March yeah. the 23rd, 2020. How did yeah. it happen? How did it come about? Well, I had actually been doing listening parties for about nine years uh, mm -hmm. before, uh, nine or ten years before, um, but only with Charlatan stuff. So, uh, so um, a, a little bit before May, May 20, uh, March 23rd, um, I suggested to my Twitter followers that I should do another listening party. And then um, a couple of people got in touch with me, Alex from uh, Franz Ferdinand, uh, who said that he loved Some Friendly. And uh, uh, and uh, Dave Roundtree um, uh, also got in touch, and they both sort of uh, both the kind of their, their conversations with me suggested that I should invite them to um, my Twitter mm. feed and have them do a listening party too for their albums. And then all of a sudden, it just took off from there. There was like within a week, there was you know we had a had a schedule all at ten o'clock at night, and then the following week there were three a night, and then at times there have been. 10 a day <laughs> I, i'm sure i'm sure i read i, I read you saying that the, the original idea came to you because you saw riz ahmed tweeting about four lions once is that right that's absolutely correct um uh, and that was about nine or ten years ago um and uh, he, he he did that and, I thought, and I, it really caught my attention uh there was um there's a moment where he said that um this is the time that I laughed the least getting in the car and Chris the director uh, chose that one because he was kind of getting annoyed with me and that that, that that kind of thing and I just thought that's such an insight that no one would ever know um that I just thought if I applied that to Charlatan's albums then they would get you know an insight you know maybe that they would never no, mm -hmm. you know, they obviously they, they, they would never know and um and that just it just grew from there really that seed it, I mean, and, uh, yeah. Go on. Sorry. No, no, no. I mean, it's, it, I guess it's wonderful. It's kind of like the like the director's commentary on a DVD, but of course that doesn't work. That doesn't work with music because you're talking over it and that ruins it. But Twitter creates this technology where you can do that in written form, and people just yeah. people just love it. Yeah, and 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 it, and it, you know, obviously it, it's worked with all thirteen Charlton's albums and my solo albums, and I repeatedly did them as a, as a, as my Twitter followers kind of grew. But then with the lock lockdown and the idea of other people. Uh, using my 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 feed to to reach out to their to their audience um that just kind of like took it you know it kind of really took it to um to new heights i mean something that's sort of lovely about it and fascinating from a journalist's perspective is that because yeah. it's because it's not because it's not criticism it's it, so i think what journalists can struggle to do is to relax enough to be fans right and and yeah. and and quite often a lot of the commentary you'll hear about art of all forms, but particularly music. If a journalist writing about music, a, ju a journalist needs to find something to object to, something to say, well, this bit wasn't quite good enough, or of this course. bit didn't, and, and there's none of that on, on the listening party. Well, there's very little of that on listening parties. It's just people enjoying things, why they're enjoying them, and how it was all put together. Is that positivity a really important part of what you set out to do, or is it just how it's involved? Well, it's interesting that um, some of my favorite listening parties have been done by um, drummers or bass players mm. in the band. Uh, you know, um, often the songwriter, but you know, <laughs> it's it's not just the singer. That's what I'm trying to yeah. um, trying to, try to put forward. And it's really interesting to have, say, Dave Roundtree, who um, from Blur, who talks about Park Life. Uh, you know, a, a huge album. No one went for kind of like, um, you know, uh, um, obscure albums. Everyone went for the big ones, and they talk their version of, of of the album with their photographs and their memories and things like that. And people, um, you know, they're listening to the album in a different way because it's not the singer telling the, the story or, um, you know, someone critiquing and, 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 and getting getting questions out of the singer. And, 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 and also, um, I think that people just ask questions and they're just like, so wow where did you find this piece of paper that has like um early scribblings <laughs> of, of the song park life or you know or if it was gary kemp you know who, who was one of my favorites you know from uh, spandau ballet he, he he talked about uh, writing the album true in in his uh, mum's council house when he was like 21 year old 21 years old and his mum was the only member of the audience you know it's kind of just incredible and so stories you'd you'd never hear otherwise. Exactly, or, or you know, a version that you would never hear before. And 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 I think people just love that. 
What do I mean? What do people? What sort of feedback do you get from people? From from I guess I guess I guess the, the word we should use is fans, but from from, from users on Twitter, from followers. Yeah. You know what yeah. about what what the listening parties meant to them, particularly over lockdown. Well, very early on, people were saying that they'd not heard an album in its entirety for the longest time, which was mm. kind of like a, a kind of a shock to me as as a, a, someone who writes albums. You know, I mean, obviously singles, but they're they're taken from albums. Um, uh, so that was one of the, the things, uh, you know, and, and it's, I guess the biggest thing has been that, it, you know, people say all the time, all the time that it's really helped them through the pandemic. Um, I've seen a, I've seen a huge change in, in the nature of the listening party where it, it kind of, it seems to have changed shape along the way and people are now, um, asking for it to be part of the promotional campaign and things like that, which is kind of fine. Uh, it's not, you know, I don't feel like it's a prerequisite, you know, I don't, uh, but, um, but uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, uh, that, that um, you know, that the music uh, industry has taken note and, and, and it's had huge jumps in, you know, streams and album sales and things like that. So it's it's, it's been really positive in, in um, a time where no one's been able to play live, um, you know, and and, uh, and and people who have been following the listening parties haven't been able to go to see shows. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of, you're right that it's sort of reinvigorated the, the idea of the album, you know, the, the album which was in danger of being replaced by sort of top tracks on Spotify or whatever. The yeah. al- you know, the album is back because it's the way you get the communal e- musical experience, which obviously is, is so hard to get during a time of a time of lockdown. Do you, do you yourself, do you still listen to music with a, with a fan's ears, if that makes sense? You know, do you still listen to music in that kind of way? Or as a, as a, as a professional musician, does that always come first? I, I like to listen to, uh, rec- uh, you know, albums in a, um, I nearly said records then. <laughs> <laughs> you can listen to records if you like. I'm sure you must sometimes well, listen to records. You know, right? I, I have a record player and, yeah. I, and I like to put an album on and listen to it all the way through. But um, uh, yeah, I listen from a fan's perspective um, often. And I, and I, I listen, uh, you know, also as a someone who makes records and 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 wants to see how other people do things too so i mean i i i i, I listen in, in in different ways but mm. you know I, I, I buy records to, to as a fan you know i've been asking people uh this, this this morning like which album helped them getting through the last year or sort of soundtrack their lockdown in a really vivid kind of way um joanne's been in touch on twitter she says that the listening parties have been a godsend and have really helped get so many people through the last year it's a happy place to be i've discovered wow. so much new music because of them and sunstack wow. jones golden repair is my new favorite album by far big love to tim uh what would what wow. would your answer to that question be tim i mean what was was your what, what if, if you had to pick an album that's got you through the last year what would it be Ah oh, well, um, it's a it's an old older record uh, by Norma Tanega, um, and it has a, a, a track on there called Illusion, um, and uh, that's been a great one. That's a that's an older record. Uh, Panda Bear, I listen to Panda Bear quite a lot, and his his recent one, uh, Boys, is very good. Oh, that's that's my listening for the tube home sorted. Look, more with Tim, <laughs> more with Tim Burgess in just a moment. So stick with us. Uh, this is Hugo Rifkind with Hugo Rifkind. Hello, this is Hugo Rifkind, and I'm currently talking with Tim Burgess about the lockdown listening parties we've had. We've had well for the last year, helping us through lockdown uh, on Twitter. Um, and Tim, you've had artists as diverse as Iron Maiden, Paul McCartney, and Kylie all with you over the space of the, of the last year. Uh, what have been the most popular ones, and can you always predict what they're going to be beforehand? Well, um, you know, the Oasis ones early on were, were, were very popular. And then when Liam did his, he was number one for a while. And obviously Paul McCartney was like a hugely popular mm. one. Um, Iron Maiden, um, you know, we worked on it for quite a while. Um, we wanted it to be um, number 666. <laughs> So we had a lot of like we had a lot of backtracking to do from that number um, <laughs> to work out how many we could have a night and things like that. So that was that was very entertaining and 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 really helped build build it up, you know, um, from from um, you know my point of view and Iron Maiden's point of view. And and actually, when it happened, they were trending at number one very very early on in their album uh, on Twitter, and it became the most popular one, um, uh, you know, very very quickly. 
uh, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that we're going to do another one by Iron Maiden uh, soon. So, um, <laughs> you don't yes, know. it's uh, Which... very incre in incredibly popular. I knew that they were, but, um, you know, but it was just fast. You, you, you don't have to sort of calculate the number for the next one. Next time you can do it. Next time you can do it whenever, I'm assuming. Um, <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've, we've eased them in a bit now. Uh, Paul McCartney, what was that like? How did that one come about? Well, that was just like the most incredible thing because uh, I saw that he had McCartney 3 um, uh, as an announcement on Twitter and I kind of cheekily sort of tagged it and said, um, how about a listening party? And didn't really hear anything for, 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 for a, a, a long time and maybe like six weeks or something like that. And I just noticed a um, Paul McCartney thumb up. <laughs> and uh, at that moment, I just knew that I had to try, I had to try and sort of like really, you know, uh, nail it down and, uh, and, you know, a lot of Zoom meetings and, and, uh, and um, you know, a lot of emails and, uh, um, went on behind the scenes and um, all of a sudden we had a listening party and it was, it was an incredible, I mean, you know, I, I mean, who isn't a Beatles fan? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a big Beatles fan, but and to see McCartney get involved. So, you know, so it's, to be so involved uh, was just a fantastic thing as was Kylie as well. You know, I mean, I've got, you know, they, I guess they were four big ones. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, are you now are you now like a team? Are you a brand? You know, does it does it sort of function function like an organisation, or is it still just really you at the heart sitting at your screen? Well, it's me at the heart sitting at my screen, but there, there's um, there's a um, Matt uh, with two T's, Matt with one T, and Andrew with no <laughs> T's, um, uh, and they're behind the scenes. That because what happened is that quite early on, uh, um, uh, two two Matts got um, in touch to say that to make this better they could do a, like a replay um um uh addition to the listening party so that meant that anyone who missed um mm. the listening party live could actually replay it in real time and 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 i obviously thought that that was an amazing idea i didn't really want to know any more about it because to me that's just kind of witchcraft <laughs> and, um, and and but they told me that they knew how to do it and you know um uh, I have uh, um, them involved in the the, the uh, uh, calendar as well, which um, was a, a real godsend for a for, you know for a singer in a band. Yeah. Um, um, you know, at, at the very beginning, I was walking around with um, um, you know post its on my forehead, <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and everything was on a, a piece of paper, and I I did um, a, a book. Um, five people in on the same at the same time um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the beginning but it was so hectic I mean that, that hopefully describes how hectic yeah. it really was at the it's beginning a, it sounds like a fabulous you know. recipe for chaos when you get when you get Paul, Paul, <laughs> yeah, Paul exactly. McCartney tweeting about an Iron Maiden album and it all just, it all just, it all just goes terribly wrong well look when when the when the <laughs> listening part the when the listening party is sort of focused on, on on your own work on old charlatan's albums or or your yeah. solo work what, what's it been like for you like going back and discussing your own work in this kind of way is it is it solely rewarding? Is it a bit frightening? I mean, what does it feel like to have your work kind of poured over in that way? Well, um, it, it, the, the best Charlatan's listening parties has been when Martin and Mark have been involved um, uh, because they take a little bit of, um, you know, they, they, they can add add something to it that, that um, makes me not sort of like focus too deep deeply into it. But um, it's really lovely to have people um, to... Uh, uh, saying wonderful things about you, you know, um, it, it, it really is. Um, um, I like to describe the whole thing, uh, listening party experience has been a bit like a uh, gig because the whole day you're kind of like preparing notes and thinking and listening. I, I listen to the album a couple of times before I actually do the listening party and I think about um, each track and try and get memories for each, you say, you know, say um, which where I was when I was writing the lyrics for a particular mm. song or you know doesn't a bass sound sound fantastic at, at this certain moment and I try and get that uh, maybe you know prepare a couple of um, tweets or something like that and then I know that I have something prepared and then while it's going you really in the moment you can just answer people and, and say something off the off the hoof uh, um, 
and uh, you know just so it, 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 it it's a preparation and then you're in the moment for like 45 minutes uh, like a live show and then I spend you know two or three hours after kind of coming down mm -hmm. and answering everybody's questions so it's it's, it's really like um it's really like a gig when no one's actually stealing your rider. <laughs> but wonderful that it, it feels a bit like a gig for you in the same way that it sort of feels a bit like a gig for people listening at home, having music music in a sort yeah. of in a communal way. That's yes. A, yeah. Really. I mean, it's a really lovely replacement form. Look for you. It's been it's been what it's been thirty three years since the Charlatans formed, uh, and um and well thirty one years since since the only one I know sort of really really broke yeah, you out. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a different music world, not just musical world, but particularly musical world we find ourselves in now. Yeah. What, what I mean, yeah. how have things? You know, it's it's a it's a big question for a short amount of time. But how have things changed? Well, in our first single, Indian Rope, um, sold something like, I think it was like 15,000 copies, um, which is quite a lot for an unknown band, mm -hmm. just off one advert in a um, fanzine called Bop City. Um, now I find myself doing listening parties um, to help uh, people um, uh, get reacquainted with an album format so uh, uh, somewhere in between yeah that, there's been a lot a lot of changes um yeah it's you know top of the pops isn't there anymore um uh, tv shows are kind of few and far between for music um people listen to music in completely different ways you know like instead of record players it's kind of like on you know laptops everything's changed it's everything and and nothing because at the end of the day um you know the beauty of music uh, is uh, is in the writing i think and the uh, and 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 the vibe and the attitude um how people experience records um will change always change i mean i, I how people like to experience music sorry uh, and albums will always change it, it, i mean it might be it might be a sort of an impossible question but the 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 sort of interaction you have with fans now and the relationship you have with fans mm -hmm. now compared to that which which you would have had 25 30 years ago which 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 was just sort of very different in structure into as the you know the, the listening party shows exactly how that happens which do you prefer well i always enjoyed um i always enjoyed uh being in magazines but and and and, and you know having our early uh releases uh of singles but i also loved fanzines mm. it was a way to um communicate your own view and your own vision in, in 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 your own way you know it comes from the band and um and i find that with social media now that can be a similar effect you know it's just done on a computer instead of a typewriter mm. and and i think uh, that the listening party is another way of like communicating to an audience in 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 just an alternative way than than speaking in between songs at a live in a, at a live show if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I well, mean, you know, magazines are few and far between, you know, yeah. it's kind of like, it's, it's all, it's all changed, but it's just a way of communicating. You have to find ways of communicating in, in, in authentic and, and original ways with, with your audience. But I think, I mean, that's, that's the, that's the strongest thing about it, isn't it? It's, it's the authenticity. Um, as yeah. we're, as we're sort of beginning to, to, to unlock, uh, okay. and venues may, may be starting to open up again relatively soon. Are you, are you optimistic yeah. about the, the, the future of, of live music for the next couple of years, festivals, things like that? Are you, are you looking forward to them? Are you raring to go? Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, seeing, um, festivals re reopen is a wonderful thing. It's a very optimistic thing. And, and the amount of tickets that have been sold is, is a very, uh, positive thing too. You know, I've, I've, I've been watching what's happening and, and, uh, people seem, very excited mm. um yeah i mean am i raring to go i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna go when you know when it's safe and when it uh, uh, and when it's the right time to go um you, you know that's all i can really say and and, and i'm I'll, I'll, I'll i mean i'm very happy on stage yeah um so and um you know with uh, with with um, people Shouting my name is quite an amazing thing. <laughs> I, mean, it, I must say, it doesn't, doesn't. It happens very rarely in radio, but it doesn't sound, doesn't sound dreadful. Um, what, 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 happen, what happens to Tim's Tim Switter listen, listening party when 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 life starts up again? When you're out and gigging and touring, will you, will you keep it going? 
Yes, I mean, you know, there, there were times during the uh, first lockdown um, where I was doing 10 a day. And that was mostly for, you know, our, our um, festivals that we um, curated. Um, so, um, uh, Sea Change Festival w w was was one of those, and uh, Broken Record w was another. Um, now, I'd like to get them back to uh, one a day. Yeah. Um, and um, and uh, and um, but to keep it going would be brilliant because I think it's uh, I think it's a really great thing. Very briefly, who have you got on tonight? What's tonight? Tonight is Echo the Bunnyman and um, uh, uh, Will Sargent doing Crocodiles. Right, amazing. Well, and, um, Will Will has been fantastic. You know, he, he's he's really getting into it, um, and um, so it'll be um, seven hundred and fifty-five listening parties uh, tonight. <laughs> Um, uh, there's an Elliot Smith tribute uh, um, album as well, which has been it's a it's um, like a compilation done by a guy from Manchester, and it's that's obviously going to be you know just we just listen to the album, no tweets from me. Sure. Well, look, thank you very much, Tim Burgess. Follow him on Twitter. Follow the Listening Party on Twitter. Thanks so much for being with us. Mm -hmm.